Hey y'all! Hey y'all! Welcome to the Sweet Chariot Travel Channel. I'm Chanitha, and in this video, I'll be sharing my overall experience of visiting Singapore as a solo traveler. So, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys find it helpful, especially to those who are planning a trip to Singapore. So. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, don't forget to hit that like button, share the video to others, and also subscribe to the channel if you are interested in solo traveling or if you would like to follow my solo traveling journey. I flew on Singaporean Airlines and the flight was great. I didn't have any problems. Also, for my luggage, for my suitcase, I did not have to pay extra for it, which was great. For the meal, I chose chicken with rice and greens along with this tiramisu-like cake. It wasn't that sweet and it didn't have a coffee flavor, so it was pretty good. It was good for airplane food. Before you go through immigration, you do have to have your SG arrival card filled out. I did not have my card filled out, so I had to like step aside and wait outside of immigration while I was filling out that form on my phone so I connected to the airport's Wi-Fi and I had to fill out information about my visit and it also has a health declaration on the form as well and then once you fill that out you can go through immigration there was also computers there that they had but I recommend just filling out that form before you leave for Singapore so you can fill it out three days in advance highly recommend just filling it out so you can have a smooth entry process. U.S. citizens are allowed to visit Singapore for 90 days and that is for either tourism or business. I did not have to apply for a visa for my trip to Singapore. So once I made it through customs, I went to the ATM and the local currency in Singapore is Singaporean dollars. For my phone service, I purchased the Singtel tourist SIM card. I hope I'm saying that right. It was $18 for 28 days. The card I purchased also came with the EasyLink as well. And the EasyLink card is used to access the bus and get onto the train station, the MRT. And so it does come with the $3 credit, but you have to add more cash to it at the kiosk at the MRT station. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like. So like I said, you have to go to the kiosk at the MRT station. You'll select your language and place the card on the contactless symbol. If you remove your card from that area, it will cancel your transaction. You can pay with Singaporean dollars or a Visa or MasterCard at the kiosk. You can also pay with a Visa or MasterCard at the scanner to enter the station. I preferred adding cash to my EasyLink card just because I'm a visitor to Singapore. And the one time that I did use my personal card, I used my credit card and not my debit card because with my debit card, I got more to lose than my credit card. But no, like with the credit card, you can like dispute the transaction a lot easier than your debit card. So yeah, my MasterCard, it takes MasterCard. main transportation when I was in Singapore and I loved using the MRT it was very impressive it's modern it's clean if you're switching a station it can be a little confusing on which way to go there are maps everywhere and it's pretty easy to understand like it's pretty easy to get around but the people who are working there if you need some guidance they were very helpful also if you're still looking for your hotel try to pick a place that is within walking distance of the MRT station for me 15 minutes is like that's good enough I would say 15 to 20 minutes that is for me what I look for anything more than 20 minutes I'm gonna be miserable. Also did use Grab when I was in Singapore twice for the airport 
and then one time to go to the gardens by the bay and i didn't have any problems using grab i paid in cash and singaporean dollars i didn't have any problems but i still recommend using the mrt at least once especially if you've never used the mrt before so yeah i stayed in the gi lang area i hope i'm saying that right i'll put the name in the video along with the mrt stations that is near so apparently that is the red light district i didn't even know that when i booked it i didn't realize that even while i was there the whole time i didn't realize it i didn't realize it until that night i was walking back from the helix bridge and i was walking through the neighborhood and i was like something's something's not right but yeah as i look around there's nothing but men out here maybe these are like i don't know sex parlor i don't know i'm close to my hotel <laughs> And I didn't have any problems walking around out here. But as I was looking around, I'm like, okay, there's one woman right there. But as I'm looking around, I'm like, I'm the only woman walking around. That's not a good thing. And then they have these like really foggy shops. I'm gonna have to look up what this area is. So, hotel. So yeah, I stayed at Hotel 81 Palace. I did not have any problems. The sheets were clean, the bed was clean, there weren't any stains or anything on the sheets or the mattress. The bathroom was clean as well. I didn't have any problems. The only thing that I did not like was that the the room was like so small, you guys. It was truly just a room. <laughs> Do y'all want a room tour of my hotel in Singapore? It's not even a studio. This is truly a room. I thought about staying in the hostel, but I don't do hostels. And honestly, this was better, a better option for me. A nice budget hotel. I think my room was like $60 a night. The prices in Singapore are very similar to the prices in the United States. And I'm only mentioning in the United States because that is where I'm from. So in Singapore, you can see they have hotels for like around $100 all the way up to $300. And in the States, it's like that as well, where to get a good hotel, it'll be around $100. So yeah, it's for me, for my budget, it's either a bunk bed at a hostel or to get a budget hotel. I didn't have any problems at that hotel and I'm not promoting that hotel. I'm just being honest about where I stayed as a solo, you know, as someone who's traveling by themselves and I'm traveling through Asia, it can be a little pricey to stay in Singapore for too long. So yeah, but yeah, I didn't have any problems. Another area that you can stay in if you don't want to choose, you know, stay in that area. Another good area is along the Orchard Road. You can stay along the Orchard Road, Clark, Quay area that's also a really good area because that is near the touristy things or the most places that people want to see like the museums as well as the hawker centers you won't have to use the MRT as much if you stay in the Clark Quay area so yeah those are some two good options Parking enforcement. So did I feel safe in Singapore? I felt very safe in Singapore. I felt safe to walk around during the daytime and the nighttime. I also felt very comfortable using my phone and using my camera. Also, the city is very walkable and I loved seeing how clean the city is. Singapore truly takes pride on how clean their city is and they have enforced certain laws to keep it that way. So I'm gonna read y'all some of the laws that they have. So they have laws against littering, Spitting in public compounds is prohibited. The sale, possession of chewing gum is banned. Jaywalking is an offense if you are near a pedestrian crosswalk, which I almost did. Like it was raining one day and I was about to run across the street and the traffic guard was like, she was like, go down the street. So I had to walk down to the pedestrian crosswalk. I had to wait in the rain, y'all. I had to wait in the rain. 
in order to cross. But what I did notice is that the locals, they definitely follow the laws. Like they will wait for the light to turn instead of just running across the street. There was one time I was crossing like a two way and there was no traffic coming. Like people could have easily just crossed and everybody just stood there and waited. And I was like, wow, like this is beautiful. Like I would have just ran across the street, but yeah. Make sure you guys follow the traffic laws. Make sure you do some research on the laws in Singapore and the fines that they have in Singapore before you actually get to Singapore. The primary language is English, which makes sense because Singapore was established by the British. Mandarin Chinese, Malay, and Tamil are also official languages of Singapore as well. I don't remember having to use Google Translate, but I would still have Google Translate just in case you need it. That was one of the shocking things to me about visiting Singapore was I didn't know that there were so many like immigrants to Singapore. So there are a large percentage of Chinese Singaporeans in Singapore. So Chinese Singaporeans make up 74% of the population. Malay Singaporeans make up 13% and Indian Singaporeans make up 9%. And so that can be a lot to learn about if you're just going to Singapore for like a quick trip. One of the best ways to explore Singapore's culture is through its food. And that is by going to the Hawker Center, y'all. You gotta go to the Hawker Center at least one time. Part of Singapore's culture, the Hawker Center, it offers a diverse range of local dishes. So many different spices so you gotta go i went to the tika center the hong lim center the airport road center which is where i had that clay pot chicken that i mentioned in my previous video when i was at the helix bridge i couldn't find the footage so i didn't put it in that video i also didn't like the clay pot chicken because i added too much soy sauce as well to um that dish looks like white rice at the bottom this looks like some bacon and i'm not sure what type of greens these are they're like uh like a broccoli it's like broccoli this is super hot okay let's eat it Another good thing too like when you're at the hawker center if you spend like six dollars on a meal it's not a big deal but at least you get to try different things at the hawker center but anyway i went to the maxwell center and then i also went to the la passat center as well the maxwell center and the la passat center were my favorites especially if you are new to traveling around Asia, I think that the La Passat Center is the best one to visit. If you're planning to go there for lunch, go after the lunch wave because most locals go to the Hawker Center for lunch. So if you can go after 2 p.m., it'll be a little easier to find a seat for yourself. So this is where you return your trays. So this is the one without pork, and then this is the one with pork. Overall, I had a great experience visiting Singapore and I can definitely see myself going back. Like I said before, it does remind me a lot of the United States just because of the malls, the casinos, the infrastructure, and even the way that people dress. So you'll see people in business attire or casual business attire. Most of the women, they were dressed pretty modestly. So even if a woman had on a dress or some shorts, it was in a modest type of way. And I honestly thought that Singapore was going to be a little conservative, but it wasn't conservative as far as like the clothing. Um, it's more like in a modest type of way. It does get very hot and humid. When I was there, it was December. As far as hair, like if you have natural hair or if you're worried about your hair reverting back or getting frizzy, then I would wear a hairstyle that does well in tropical climates. It is humid in Singapore, so just keep that in mind. But, all right, y'all, that is the end of this video. Y'all, this is my second time recording this video because I used this mic and I forgot to turn on the Bluetooth and it wasn't recording. So this morning, I recorded the whole video, patted myself on the back, and then tried to upload it and realized there was no audio. So right now, the plan is for me to put out my content for Malaysia 
And in that meantime, I'll probably put out my experience in Junk Jakarta as well. So that is the end of this video, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know by hitting that like button. Also, share the video to anyone who you know is interested in going to Singapore or interested in solo traveling to Singapore. And subscribe to the channel if you are interested in solo traveling or if you would like to follow my solo traveling journey. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time.